I don't think the hospital administration is going to want members of the House Association wearing Frank Ryan for Senate buttons. Well, of course not while they're on duty, Jack. Well, my idea is to get Clem to, to let him know that at least Frank is running for something, you know? Oh, yeah, I mean, sure think about that. It's not such hey, a bad idea. Take a look at this. Bobby, how are you? Hey, Bobby, Feature how are you? story. Oh, my, would you look at that? Yeah. Four columns, a picture. Oh, handsome lad. I wonder where he gets his good looks from. <laughs> let, let, let the candidate see it. The huh? candidate is my son. All right, you guys. Now, take it easy. I brought copies over for everybody. Oh, take a look. Oh, look at that. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Ah, yep. She says that Frank is a dark horse for the mm. Senate nomination, but that he's going to gather support very quickly. I mean, the lady really yeah. went to bat for you, Frank. Or if you think it was her boyfriend running. <laughs> oh, you think? Well, hold on, Bobby. There are some people who think I would make a good senator. No kidding. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. She really, uh, really makes you out to be the hero of the hospital strike. Well, he was, wasn't he, Jack? Uh, Frank, this is terrific. Yeah. It really is. Mm. Oh, I am beginning to really want this mm. stuff. Well, of course you want it. No, I mean really want it. I know what you mean. You do? This story is a tremendous boost. I've never had coverage like this. <laughs> kind of thing like this makes all the other publications want to do the same. Yeah. Not just other newspapers, but the weeklies, the monthlies, television. They see a story in the making, they all want to get in on yeah. it. Yeah. Who's this Judy Johnson person, anyway? According to Ray, according to Ray, she was one of Bill Woodard's favorite reporters. I mean the best. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> as far as the Woodard chain is concerned, <laughs> anyway. Oh, well. And to think, to think I almost passed this opportunity up. But I had her into the office yesterday, and, well, she was interviewing me before I ever knew it. Mm. She made it as natural as breathing. And listen to this, she said, she said she wants to go into more depth. And that the best way to do that was to follow me around, follow the campaign around. Yeah. Well, let her, let her. You bet I'll let her. <laughs> hey, I thought I was the uh, inside reporter in the Ryan camp. Well, if you'd give us coverage like this once in a while, maybe we'd consider it. <laughs> Don't worry, Jack. You're still number one. For the sake of Mary and the baby. But you do have some competition. Look, I gotta admit it, the lady's good. Very good. Mm. It's a great break for you, Frank. And even I welcome it, might even sharpen up my writing. Mm. Judy may prove to be invaluable. Judy, come in. Thanks. It was a lovely spread you did on Frank. Thank you. I was pleased with it. I was also pleased with something else. Really? What? Well, it's very puzzling, Ray. Something just happened that I don't understand at all. First supply now. She's on deck. I Take the call. If you want to see my wife, she's on deck. I was just about to take lunch out to her. I don't want to see your wife, Dr. Ryan. I've just left her. I want to talk to you about your wife. Uh, I don't really understand. Would you mind? It won't take long. It's a very personal matter. Okay. I am Susan Simpson, the wife of Howard Simpson. Oh, yes. Like you, we are passengers aboard this pleasure cruise. I'm sorry to have to do this, but I have one or two unpleasant things to tell you. Are you sure you have the right person? Quite sure. I'm Dr. Patrick Ryan. My wife is Delia Ryan. The blonde. I know who you are and who she is. I wouldn't be here if I didn't. Now, I'm not in the habit of making trouble for but, people. But, um, you seem to be very angry about something, and I think I you am, might be Dr. Ryan, very angry at my husband and your wife together. What? I'm not surprised. You haven't a clue as to what's been going on behind your back, have you? Who knows? 
knows how many times or in how many different places. Mrs. Simpson, you're going to make me angry in a minute. I don't like the accusations about my wife. I've been in sick bay for most of this voyage. Yes, your husband was saying something about that. I get seasick. My husband knew that when he bought the tickets. But they've been giving me medication and... Finally, the day before yesterday, I felt well enough to go back to my cabin. And when I did, I opened the door and found my husband entertaining Mrs. Ryan. Oh, come on, Mrs. Simpson. I saw what I saw. That's impossible. Why? Because Delia and I have been together during the entire trip. This was the day... Including the day before yesterday. In the afternoon, between two and four. I was taking a nap. And Mrs. Ryan was off on her own. No, she was in the cabin the whole time. She was sitting... Mrs. Simpson, I don't believe you. <laughs> Better for you if you did, honey. It's the only way you're going to learn from it. I hope everyone will learn from this. Howard will. I'll see to that. I have less hope for Mrs. Ryan. The only problem is, Mrs. Simpson, is that it never happened, except in your imagination. You poor man. No, Delia has been ill. She's recovering from an accident. She's had a case of hysterical blindness for weeks. She can't see anything, which is not exactly conducive to a shipboard romance. Blind? That's right. You don't know very much about your wife, Dr. Ryan. What are you talking about? And I have to tell you, I'm glad you're not my doctor if you can't tell the difference between a blind person and one who sees just as well as I do. I don't want to take too much of your time. Nonsense. Can I offer you something? Tea? No. Bite of lunch. Oh, thank you. A remarkable thing happened to me today. So you just said, tell all. I have been promoted. I'm the new head of the Washington, of the paper's Washington Bureau, and I report to work in Washington tomorrow morning. Congratulations. It's well deserved. Bill always said you were his favorite reporter. I'm glad he felt that way. And I'm sure you'll have great success in Washington. I hope so. It's a wonderful opportunity, but uh, I am totally mystified. <sighs> you see, I know I'm a good reporter, but I don't know anything about being a bureau chief. He'll learn. Ray, I don't want to be anything but honest with you. I was told that my promotion came as a direct order from you. Would it make any difference if it did? I don't think so. And I certainly don't want to look a gift horse in the... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. It's all right. What is your trouble, Judy? I can't help wondering why. It's a natural step up for you. You work here on the paper has been exemplary. You get the stories you go after. Your writing is innovative and exciting. You are imaginative, attractive, forceful personality with ideas and leadership ability. Do you want me to go on? <laughs> Please do. <laughs> it's very simple. New York is a dead end for you. There's no more room at the top. Besides, I've been feeling lately that uh, we should have more women as bureau chiefs in spite of the fact that I have absolutely no experience. We'll call it on-the-job training. You do know that there are one or two people ahead of me in line for the D.C. job. Why don't you just let that be my problem, huh? There's nothing more you can tell me? <laughs> now I know why you're so good. You hang in, don't you? No. There's nothing more I can tell you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. No thanks necessary. Just do as well in Washington as you have here. I'm sure you will. 
There is one other thing. I'd prefer it if you had no further reason to see Frank Ryan. I don't know what you mean. The promotion and the move to Washington are yours, and for the reasons I just gave you, but there is this one added condition. That I don't see Frank Ryan. If you're ever in the same room with him again, you're fired. Oh. And if you ever repeat this conversation, you're fired. And don't be foolish. If you do repeat it, I'll know about it. Do we understand each other? I understand perfectly. May I? Thank you. And uh, thanks again for this uh, opportunity. Why? No thanks. Just fulfill my expectations in Washington. I'll do my best. Right. Bye, Judy. Good luck. Goodbye, Ray. And good luck to you. family bailout. How do you handle the press if they all come asking for features? You can't do them all at the same time. Beginning to look like uh, you need a press secretary. Yeah, mm -hmm. Someone to handle just this kind of a problem. Oh. Jack, I don't suppose you would consider taking uh, it. I've got a job. Well, uh, what about Mary? She was the best press secretary you ever had. That's a great idea, right. Bobby. No, great no, idea. it's not. Well, well why don't we ask Mary? Maybe she can find the time to do it and give her a little pleasure. Hold mm -hmm. on, Dash. I bet she doesn't have a little a pleasure in her. <laughs> well, uh, it looks like uh, you two people have something to say. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> you go ahead. We have a big announcement. <laughs> we are getting married. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Congratulations. Yes. Thanks, Frank. Oh, 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 oh. Thank God. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. It's wonderful. Oh, I'm happy for you. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. When, uh, when's the big event? Oh, Tom, what a relief. You're in the clear now. I mean, you're out of danger, this means, right? Right, it should do that. It will. Is a lot of fears. Uh -huh. Gonna give you a whole new lease on life. I'm so happy for you, uh -oh. Rick. And Faith, I'm proud of you, sweetheart. Thank you. Oh. I'm sure you know it's clear that my problems with the immigration are our main reason for getting married, but who can say what might happen? <laughs> it might even work. Oh, oh, you never know. Certainly a solution to your problem, Tom. Jack, it's the only solution. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> we have more than one reason to celebrate today. Come on, the first round's on me. Hold on, Johnny. My day for buying the rounds. No, how about me? How about my money? I'm buying. You don't approve, do you? Yeah, I can't see. Be cozied up to this reporter. It's not a matter of my approval. You're an intelligent, grown-up person. Whatever it is. You know what you're doing. You don't think it's right, though? You considered all the ramifications? Yes, I think I have. Pat? Pat is not one of the things I have to consider. But he's still an emotional subject for you, isn't he? Jack, I don't like to be reminded of the things I work overtime to forget. Faith, it's not possible. Pat isn't just going to go away because you don't think about him. I've been making a great effort for months, long before Tom and I got serious, not to live my life in terms of Pat. This is an independent decision. It has nothing to do with him. Pat has Delia. And no matter how much trouble the two of them may have, I'm thoroughly convinced he will always have Delia. And it's taken me a long time to come to that realization. But I'm there now. Pat and I are over, forever. We have to be if I want any kind of life at all. Regardless of how I may still feel for him, Pat and I are over. 
Hey, all of you people, now come on down here. We're about to raise a toast to the bride and groom, and there you are having a private come Jack Faith. Come on, come on, give him his drink. Now, Tom Desmond here, gentlemen, has proposed marriage to Faith Coleridge, a beautiful girl whom I have known since before you were born, <laughs> was turned into a wonderful human being. Uh, and I can't think of a finer gentleman to be her husband than Tom Desmond, formerly O'Brien, of Limerick, Ireland, and Tom. We hope this means an end to your problems. Gentlemen, I give you the future Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Desmond. That's right. You're here. You're here. Oh, yes. Toothpaste is today. Mrs. Simpson, you have to be talking about someone else. My wife is hysterically blind. I just left her out. On deck, in a sun hat, dark glasses, covered head to toe in a lap robe and trying to hide her face. That's your wife, isn't it, Dr. Ryan? Yes. She can see, honey. She saw me quite clearly when I walked in on her and my husband. I don't know what the confusion is, Mrs. Simpson, but I simply don't believe you. I think you don't want to believe that she's put one over on you. If you don't believe me, why don't you go and find out for yourself? You're a doctor. Surely you can figure out whether a person is blind or faking. Excuse me. Yes, it is. Oh, good. I was so startled. How'd you get back down here? I got them to make a picnic lunch, and then I came looking for you out on deck where I left you. Oh, I'm really sorry. It was just that you were gone so long. So I had the steward bring me back here. Did you bring the picnic back here? Yeah. I knew it. I thought so. I thought I could smell it. Let me see. I have a feeling it's, um, it's right down here. It's here. Okay. Got it. Are we gonna have lunch here? Help yourself. I'm not very hungry. Yeah, I don't think I'm so hungry either. Honey, it's just that you were gone so long and I got terribly lonely. Well, I was in the lounge. I waiting for them to make up the lunch. Yeah. Uh, the whole time? Yeah. Talking to anyone? Yes, I was. Who? Uh, some of the other passengers. Well, that's nice. Honey, what would you like to do tonight? I don't know, Delia. What would you like to do? Well, um, let's see. I was thinking about, um... We could just stay in the cabin, and we could order a cozy little dinner for two. Well, that sounds like it'd be an interesting thing to do. Yeah. Patty, you know what I was thinking? I was thinking that you were right to begin with. I think that we should have had more time to rest. Just like you said, I mean, I didn't let you get the rest that you should have had. And I think in the time that we have left, I think what we should do is, is try to be alone together, you know? We 
should just keep to ourselves and, and have fun, but in, but in a quiet way. Just us. You seem to be very tense about something, Delia. No, no, I'm not. It's... Well, I'm blind, you know, what I have to do for myself. And I guess that upsets me sometimes. Can't see things, so I, I take it out of myself. You shouldn't do that. Yeah, well, I know I shouldn't do it. But I do anyway. I mean, there are enough people uh, that would be mean to me without me being mean to myself. Uh, Patty, I don't know, just sometimes I can't help it. See, sometimes I blame myself for being blind, you know? And I can't find things. Like, I don't know where my hairbrush is. I, I think I dropped it when you, when you came in because you startled me so much. But right now, um, I wouldn't be able to find it, and my hair is such an awful mess. You don't have to agonize over it. You want your hairbrush? Look, I don't want to ask you for it. Um, I don't like being helpless. That's no trouble. Oh. Here it is, in here. Good catch. Sometimes it's sugar, sometimes it's spice, but breakfast in bed is always satisfying. Every weekend, get your fill with back-to-back -back episodes of Beverly Hills 90210 and One Tree Hill. Breakfast in bed, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. every Saturday and Sunday, only on SoapNet.